I'm going to shoot some more arrows out of my bare bow today and I'm going to give my thoughts on how to adapt the NTS, the best method, or the KSL shot cycle with bare bow shooting. Now this is not just traditional shooting, this is string walking bare bow that is world archery uh, affiliated as far as the rules go. So yes I know that this isn't a bare bow but this fits the rules of the bare bow class. But uh, anyway, that's what we're going to be doing today. If you're new here, my name is Jake Kaminsky. I'm a two-time Olympic silver medalist in the sport of archery. I used to shoot Olympic recurve. I have since retired. It's been about two years since I've really shot Olympic recurve. And I decided uh, to start up this YouTube channel again and kind of got my interest back in the sport. And I figured getting into it again with bare bow uh, would be a bit healthier for me as an individual due to my competitive nature. So I'm trying the bare bow out and I'm very proficient at the KSL shot cycle or the NTS system because I worked with Coach Lee for over six years full time. And I just got done doing a whole series on how to use his method. I'll put a link in the description below and I'll put a card up at the top where you can find that actual series. Anyway, if you're interested in learning more about archery, hit that subscription button and the notification bell so that way you're notified every time I upload a new video. I'm pumping out tons of content lately between form and tuning and now shooting bare bow, exercising for the sport of archery, uh, equipment for the sport, how to travel, lots and lots of different things coming out and coming through the pipeline so you don't wanna miss out on anything. You're watching the Jake Kaminsky YouTube channel. Today, what I'm going to do, well, first I'm going to put on lighter limbs uh, because in the previous video that I was shooting bare bow, um, the weight limbs that I normally shoot are just too heavy. Um, not only because I haven't been shooting for forever, but also string walking is just a bit different and to manage the uh, target panic and stuff like that. I'm going to go down and wait. I don't have the limbs that I want yet, so I hope you guys don't mind, but I'm going to kind of make these videos more of like a docu-series or... I guess a vlog for lack of better terms and you know I, I don't mind and I hope you guys don't mind me uh, doing things while I'm talking to you about this you know because I can share a bit more information this way without being so sterile and um, you know I guess not necessarily rehearsed but you know this makes it a bit more interesting for some of you guys um, obviously some are here for just the shooting if you're interested in just shooting, let me know. I can probably do videos that is just me shooting. Don't know if that would be interesting or not. Um, but uh, at this point, my strength is not exactly up there to shoot a lot of arrows anyhow. So the limbs that I did have on and the limbs that I was competing with when I was shooting full time are uh, long 42s. So they're pretty heavy. Um, and th that's measured at a short draw length compared to a height limb. So these are actually like 44 to 46 pound limbs. So they're quite heavy. Um, the limbs that I'm putting on are mediums, but they're 28 pound limbs. So a whole lot lighter and uh, hopefully my arrows will still fly halfway okay today to do some of these things. I decided I wanted to do this video in particular because I have, uh, so I have a Patreon page. I've had a couple people that have signed up for the coaching stuff. So what happens is they submit me a video and um, once a month and I review the video and give them a video response to that video where I talk about anything that they want to work on, whether it be form or training or tuning, doesn't matter. Um, but anyway, I had a guy submit to me a bare bow video and I watched him and you can tell that he's trying to use the NTS system. It looks very new to him. He did actually a very good job. However, um, I can see some of the issues that would um, occur due to some of the form you know, in relation to specifically, like one of the things was the anchor or the load to anchor. With regular recurve, um, we have an under the jaw anchor. So pulling down just under the anchor to anchor up is, you know, very easy and natural and it's not very disturbing. But for bare bow, pulling down to come up to anchor is going to be more challenging. There's a lot more stuff going on back here. So I kind of want to do this and uh, show you some of my thoughts form wise on how to translate or how to use both methods or both styles but anyway if you're interested in becoming a patreon supporter to check out either that coaching stuff or you know just to support this channel anyway i'll put a card up at the top and there'll be a link in the description below too 
So these are medium limbs. I think, let's see, they're about eight and a half inch brace height. I don't know what that is metric, if you really want me to tell you. It's about 22. And that looks good enough. I'm not gonna align the limbs. They're from win and win stuff, limb to limb, not a massive difference. Um, so this will be just fine. But anyway, I, I wanted to do this form stuff to just kind of show and highlight the difference between the two because it is very different. There's a lot of different positioning. It's a lot harder to get into alignment and some of the other stuff. So I figure it'll be best to do it while I'm shooting and that way I can explain it to you and everybody can follow along instead of me just talking to you in front of this gray wall and saying what I think. Um, so I can explain it and show it and hopefully we'll have a bit more uh, interest in it this way. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling off the hush pucks from the set of limbs that I was using, putting them on these limbs. Actually, they removed quite easy and they're very sticky, which is nice. So uh, it's easy to just throw them on these limbs. I just really, really don't like shooting a loud bow and these bare bows can be very loud. So I figure since it's legal, I'm putting them on. So I've had a few questions specifically about the tab I was using because it's just a custom tab. It's nothing fancy. Um, this is an uh, KSL, well, it's not a KSL gold. This is a Terry Laney tab, which is essentially identical to the KSL gold, but I chopped the back half off with, uh, I don't even know what I used, probably a cutoff, saw, a cutoff wheel on a grinder or something. So that's cut off. So the thing is not sticking into your palm because it's in the way. Um, but uh, I had a piece of leather laying around that I didn't have the split cut for the split finger shooting. And that's all that this is. This is actually a small tab, um, but it works for me pretty good. I actually built this for my wife to play with. And um, you know, it just has the three elastic loops for the fingers. I am thinking, you know, I like the three loops. It, it makes it feel nice and comfortable. I gotta cut this extra little tag off. But uh, as you can see, when I go to string crawl or whatever, I can't really do it because it's just not made for this. So um, this is just for a temporary thing and really just for the time being. But uh, that's kind of what it is. A lot of people have asked about it. So it's homemade, not bought. All right. Well, I'm back at 10 yards just because uh, same arrows, different limbs again, a lot lighter. So hopefully this will go a little bit better today than it did the other time. But uh We'll see. I'm going to crawl a little less because these are lighter weight. Like I said, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, they definitely fly terrible with not a lot of weight. I have to go and get a Allen wrench so I can adjust this plunger tension. And I don't have to aim so far off. All right, crank down the plunger just about as far as it'll go. So we'll see if that's a little better. Closer. So I've had a couple of people ask, why aren't you using a finger sling? You don't really need one. I mean, the bow doesn't roll forward any, it stays pretty much vertical. I'm not holding on to the bow, I'm not death gripping it, I'm not doing anything, I'm just kind of letting it sit there and I don't let it fly out of my hand. The guy won the Olympics in 20, 2008 didn't shoot a finger sling, so you don't need one, as far as I'm concerned. So, um, as far as the load to anchor, you can see that I'm not coming down very far. 
it's more of I'm locking in and then just kind of anchoring. Um, I don't think going down with this is going to be all that important because I believe that if we do go down, we will lose too much back tension coming back into anchor, in my opinion. So I think the main driving factor is alignment, making sure we're as much in our back as fully possible, and then come into anchor. At least that's what I'm thinking. playing around with my anchor so you're gonna see it change as this video goes on I'm just trying to find something that uh, that I can do repeatedly so my theory you know and a lot of people have said that um, if I anchor up higher I'll have to crawl less for the close distances yeah for sure um, my, my theory is that uh, I want to have repeatable form and repeatable anchor because that's basically the majority of what people said is one you'll run out of space on your tab to crawl I can see that being a problem but um, as far as affecting the tune I feel like the form would be way more important than your tune or, or consistency would be way more important than potentially throwing your tune off a little bit so it's kind of my thoughts That felt pretty good. Now, as far as anything else form-wise, I think it's all going to be the same. I don't think this is going to be happening, the whole thing, because um, the bow doesn't want it. The bow will never rock forward. I don't know. I'll have to play with it. I don't, I don't have a finger sling right now anyway, so... That anchor feels a little better. The alignment's not as good, but I definitely think my crawl's a little better. It's still a lot. Need a new O-ring on this one, and the plunger keeps vibrating loose because it's so dry rotted and old. So do you guys put the crest of the top of the point, like where it crests in the X? You held it just low. Where does everybody aim? How do they aim? I'm sure it's different for everybody. I'm trying to get the feel of that and what I'm looking for. Man, I'll tell you, these limbs are nice to shoot. Much more enjoyable.
trying to figure out now, like timing, expansion, not a not a tell to shoot, but I don't know. You know, trying to find a mental picture that works to help drive the shot similar, you know, to like when you're using a clicker, you have no choice. You got to hold in the middle until it clicks and then you fire. So uh, for this stuff, I'm experimenting mentally with like a, a cue, not physically, not like the string touch of my face or something like that, like I've heard. Um, I don't know. What do, you, what do you guys think about those two? Because I, I think that those would help with target panic. But I wouldn't even know where to start with that because the crawl changes everything. So it can't be when the arrow touches your nose or, or whatever because I would imagine that would change. I don't know. All right, just for giggles, I'm going to anchor higher, see how that goes. So many people said go way up. I don't know. I'll try it. I doubt. I don't know. I have no idea where to go. I've heard a lot of cheekbones. I'll crawl for this one. Turn this thing up more. Interesting. Way harder to get into alignment. Pretty much impossible. Definitely feels a lot less efficient as far as how I'm holding. Try it again though. Well, I can see why you guys tape your nose, but oh, some weights came loose. I don't like that anchor. That's awful. I mean, at least for me. I'm not going to say it's awful for you. Yeah, I don't know as far as the anchor goes, that's definitely going to be probably, well, between that and um, the aiming consistently, deciding when to fire, obviously, but the, the anchor is definitely going to be um, very challenging to get comfortable with because it is totally foreign. I mean, it needs to weigh down here. So uh, I don't really have thoughts on that yet. I do like anchoring lower, despite the larger crawl. Uh, I think that being in alignment like that is just so advantageous. Um, you know, many people are like, oh, look at that alignment already, you know? So I think that's gotta be some sort of an important thing. Um, the bow hand, I definitely would like a lower grip. It just, um, I don't know, I think maybe with the, without a crawl, compared to with a crawl, 
Yeah, it's like the wrist, the, the grip gets much higher the lower the crawl or the more the crawl. So I think I'm going to go with a lower, even lower than this. Um, probably quite low. The loading, it doesn't need to be so low. It can just be locked and then anchor. It's uh, mainly driven by your back, mainly driven by how much you feel like you have as far as back tension goes, your, your structure. That really dictates that position. I come in here and then load. I don't know, I'm not quite there yet, but we'll, we'll figure it out. But the, uh, so the way I exert forces on the bow is the same. Um, and a few people were asking, why, do you, why does that bow arm keep kicking to the left? And this is going to be reversed because you're watching me, but essentially if this is the arrow line and this is your shoulder line, um, if you're exerting forces towards where you're aiming, it's technically on the arrow line. But we're not trying to shoot the arrow along the arrow line, we're shooting the arrow through the bow. You shoot the bow, the bow shoots the arrow, right? So what I'm thinking is, if this is the arrow line, here's the bow line, if I'm exerting forces towards the target, the bow hand is going to kick to the left, which is okay. Uh, I'm right-handed, the bow kicks to the left, that's strong. If it kicked to the right, that'd be weak, and you don't want that. You know, if I was shooting traditional, it'd be like snap shooting, especially, you know, like when I would shoot um, and go bow fishing, it's just like, it's throwing a ball. You know, you don't have a sight when you're throwing a ball at somebody else, right? You get used to that, that feel of how much power you drive, the angle that it comes off your hands, etc. So that's how I shot my, uh, my, my instinctive stuff when I shot like, you know, at fish, uh, bow fishing, or fun without sights, you know, kind of doing three under and just kind of, just point and shooting, not necessarily, actually aiming so I think that that is going to be more of an adjustment with this because there's so much aiming involved so I don't I don't know yet I, I'm going to need oh quite a while I think to figure out the cue or the mental picture of how to get the shot off you know thanks for watching and thank you to my patreon supporters if you want to become a patreon supporter or check out books apparel and some seminar info head to jkaminski.com and uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified every time a new video is uploaded and i appreciate you watching thank you again